Greetings, citizens of Nerdtropolis. Sean Taj here, the mayor of Nerdtropolis, and my guest today is Robert Vince, the creator and director of the Airbud franchise. Hey, Robert, it's great to chat with you today about the world of Airbud and beyond. And um, it's super exciting to hear that the collection is going to be on Disney Plus. And I grew up on Airbud, being a '90s kid, and it's just a movie that I I remember to this day. And you know, Airbud is a household name and has become an iconic family-friendly character and so it's super exciting that a new generation can see Air Bud and the other movies as well on Disney Plus so how exciting is that for you it's great you know it's, it's just one of those uh movies that we made it's 25 years ago that became not just a movie but became a franchise of five Air Bud movies and nine Air Buddies movies and and it's really the name it's the name of our company now it has been for a while but entertainment so it just something it embodies something special that movie uh for families and and i and you know it's not just about a dog that plays basketball it just really has a lot of heart and uh and gravitas and which is why it stood the test of time so to have it all together on disney plus for the first time now is really at, at this moment in particular um, is is really gratifying for us, and and I really, you know, like as you said, you are a, you're a '90s kid, so you, you know, you all are having kids yourself now, and your parents are now grandparents, and so it's a it's it's a multi generational um, experience, and and I think every the entire family can can enjoy it, and introducing it to a new group of young kids, a, a new is is pretty special. Yeah, and y'all made golden retrievers super popular after this, very popular then. I luckily um, had a friend in high school that had two golden retrievers and they still have golden retrievers to this day. So that was my experience with golden retrievers. My parents tried to get me one as a kid. My dad brought home one. My mom said, no, it still haunts me to this day, but I got to spend time with a golden retriever puppy and they're just amazing. So it was one day with a golden retriever uh, that's embedded in my memory. But, you know, I love seeing these movies and they're a bunch of fun and golden retrievers are amazing dogs. Yeah, I think there. I think I, I, for me, I have a golden retriever now. I've always had a golden retriever, um, and you know they're they're just the perfect family dog. You know, and they they're always happy to see you, and and you know they are a member of the family. You know, and, and you know there's lots of different breeds that are great breeds, but something about the golden that just you know really it, a it really is a family dog for all the way up and down the line. You know, like mom loves the dog, the kids love the dog, dad wants to play with the dog too. You know, so. It really is kind of uh, the perfect, you know, character for a a, a four quadrant family experience and in, in the movie in a, in a movie. Yeah, uh, like I said, my friend had a golden retriever, and despite me not being the owner, every time I came back to the house, was so excited to see me. <laughs> they have so much fun and energy, and so I can only imagine on the set having a golden retriever is super exciting. But you know, take us back to how you found Buddy. Yeah, so I, I, I was watching uh, David Letterman's uh, Stupid Pet Tricks uh, way back then at, at the talk show, and and there's a dog playing basketball, and I was just like, no way, this can't be right, you know. So it was it was so magical, and and I I could hardly keep, keep my eyes off it. So I called I called the producer there, and they gave me the name of uh, Kevin DeChico as the dog owner, and he, uh, he came to my office here in Malibu and set up a you know a full basketball court out in our parking lot and I checked the ball and you know it's a real basketball I'm like come on and for over an hour probably an hour and a half uh, Kevin and this dog played basketball and I don't mean just line them up and you just you know you give a perfect pass to the dog they played basketball and this dog was hitting hitting hoops from all over the court and it was like wow like this is this is beyond amazing and it, and it has and and then I you know there was a script there and we developed the script um uh with the writers and and it just turned out to be this sort of magical experience you know it's lightning in the bottle as we say that happens every once in a while and it, and it, and it just is meant to be and of course everybody in hollywood turned it down uh, uh including disney I and mean, it was actually after the movie was made that disney picked it up for for the u.s distribution and took it out theatrically uh and yeah it's just it just it's just uh it, we always have to take you know especially when you're making family movies you have to take a risk because everybody wants what they what they saw last week, another you know action adventure movie, and really, you know, Airbud is timeless. You can see it. What is this? Twenty six years later, you know, 
14 movies later like is there any other franchise other than maybe maybe barbie barbie did you know we you know did a bunch of uh direct dvd movies before it had the big theatrical re but but other than that there's very few franchises and they're always family franchises that have those kind of legs that's what I love about it. The whole family can watch them. And a great timing for the first movie in the 90s, too. And, you know, basketball is still very popular today. But, like, the 90s basketball was really intense and fun and a lot of big uh, players and stuff like that. So, you know, basketball was a sport I grew up playing. And so a dog that could play basketball with you was, like, every boy's dream, I felt like. So, you know, the dog was obviously trained brilliantly and was amazing. Was there any additional training needed to get ready for the camera? You know, Funnily enough, not. Yeah, the trainer Kevin DeChico had done so many events with this dog playing basketball, and he was just like, they were like, you know, best friends that just went everywhere and played basketball. And and Kevin was a uh, DeChico is such a sports nut, so he, you know, this dog was basically a savant in the world of sports. You know, so uh, I don't know how else to explain it. We had no other trainers that were training him on set. It was all done by Kevin, who wasn't a professional trainer. It was literally a dog owner uh, that had this dog that he took to parties playing basketball and whatever. And so, yeah, it's, it's such an organic, you know, authentic experience. There's no visual effects. I mean, it just it just really was what it was that you saw on the screen, this kind of incredible moment. Yeah. Was there any difficulties capturing it, capturing all those tricks and moments on set or it kind of just flowed easily and the camera just followed what was going on? Pretty much. I mean, you really, I mean, obviously there, there's things that we have to do to, to film because it's not just about a dog playing basketball. That's the, the, the hook. There's a lot going on on a movie set, but you know, a golden retriever doesn't care that there's all this stuff going on in the background. A, a dog like a buddy was really interested in playing, playing, uh, or playing basketball, playing with the ball. That's really what he cared about. And so when he came on set, he didn't care there were cameras there. He didn't care that there was all his activity behind the scenes, people dropping things or whatever's going on a movie set, uh, lighting, moving around. He, he was just playing basketball. So when we did those scenes, uh, Charlie Martin Smith, who was director, uh, he, he just he just kind of went with it and it, on the basketball scenes, and you know, and and it just saw it, it really did happen kind of organically uh, with the kids playing with the dog because that's what the dog wanted to do. You brought you brought him onto a set. You had to clear all the balls off the set because if, if he had to do a scene that didn't have a, you know a, the dog playing basketball and you had a ball there, he'd go like that, just kind of like a golden retriever does, kind of stare like, okay, let's play, let's go, it's time. You know? So you couldn't get him to do anything else. So yeah, so it, you know, it is a, it was very a very yeah, magical moment. Yeah. So how many cups of pudding did we go through on the set? Uh, one of the most memorable scenes and I love pudding. So I would think I'd be eating pudding all day. And was it actually pudding? You know, it's just, I'm going to go by memory. I believe it. I believe it was pudding. It was, you saw it wasn't chocolate pudding because chocolate's dangerous for dogs. It was vanilla. I think vanilla was fine. And you know, what dog, does, what person doesn't like vanilla pudding, but uh, yeah. So originally in the script, it was chocolate pudding. We, that's not, healthy for dogs so it ended up being vanilla but it, that again that was you know those are those, those kind of moments that happen in that movie that are so memorable you know and i remember showing uh four scenes to disney at that time joe Roth was the head of the studio and he uh i showed him four scenes the pudding cup scene the first time buddy uh shot a basket in the secret court and i showed him the scene where josh tells buddy to go away and i think that was it i think i, I, think I showed him one of the film wasn't finished yet and he kind of looked at me, he goes, after he saw the, the pudding cup scene, and he knew the dog was going to play basketball. He kind of got that. But then he, then, he, then he, he saw the pudding cup scene, and then he saw the scene with the, telling the dog to go away. He just said, stop. I'm in. You know, if, I, if I'm going to cry watching that scene, the audience is going to cry watching the scene. And that's really what, what happened the first time we, uh, we showed the footage of it. Yeah, I'm thinking about that scene now and I'm just holding back tears. It is, it yeah. is a sad moment. And, you know, we love animals so much, but sometimes, you know, the the worse you get to you and you say something you don't want to say. But uh, what a great story that is. And that was just the beginning of Air Bud and the spinoffs and everything else you delivered to us. What was the most challenging sport to film? You know, uh, remember after, the, after Air Bud, the original Air Bud dog was no longer with us, passed away. Unfortunately, you know, we're really blessed to have had that. He had cancer. And, and so that was 
So really, what it wasn't about what sports was more challenging. It was that we didn't have the original Air Bud dog anymore. Then it had to be about training. And then it became like that dog was so amazing to copy, you know, so we'd have like for the next movies, we like four dogs or five dogs trained to do specific things to do what that dog just did like that. So, so I wouldn't say it was about the sport as much as, as it was about that. We didn't, we didn't have the original buddy um, after that, which was a, a, I didn't realize, I, I really didn't realize until we were making the next movie, like, Oh my God, like this dog was like, we knew he was special, but we didn't know he was that special. It was like, it's like having the Michael Jordan of dogs, on on your set you know and then after that you, you're gonna you gotta go for some uh you know some club players you know <laughs> it's like it was not quite the same <laughs> yeah buddy was one of a kind and left quite a mark on everybody and we'll you know throughout the this show this movie being shown on disney plus you know we're gonna see the original buddy and everyone's gonna fall in love and then everything else that came after that is there any kind of memorable or funny behind the scenes stuff with the original buddy you know, uh, the, with the original buddy, it was really what was most memorable about uh, the the original buddy was just that how focused he was. So I remember we were doing a basketball scene. Well, so for how it worked was if there was a golf ball somewhere, he would focus on that golf ball. And then you brought a tennis ball in, it was bigger. So he'd go to the tennis ball and then all the way up the chain. So his favorite ball was a basketball. So we were trying to do a scene where the dog was kind of looking and, you know, dogs don't talk, at least not at that time. And so we had to, you know, the, he was, the, the trainer was holding a, up a tennis ball and the dog was not focusing. He was like all over the place. He couldn't, he's like, I don't know what's going on. And then way off in the distance was the kid, a kid just tossing a basketball. We couldn't figure out what was going on. His head was going up and down and up and down. He was falling the basketball. Couldn't care less about the tennis ball anymore. So we had things like that that were happening. I, I still remember that because it was so funny because everybody was like, oh, why is the dog not focused today? Way off at the end of the gym. What is he looking at? Some kid just tossing a, a bigger ball, a, a basketball. And he, so he was obsessed with basketballs for sure. Yeah. And then, you know, we transitioned to some puppies and how, how is it hard? How difficult is it to deal with puppies? And I mean, they're just so cute. How is that experience like just dealing with the, the small ones? Yeah. So when we did the Air Buddies franchise, you mean the, the, the spin off? Yeah. So that, that is a whole different, that was a whole different thing because it is the first time we had talking animals and visual effects and everything else. So we kind of broke the mold on that. Um, and that was itself a crazy experience. It was so Airbud, the original Airbud was like, oh my God, this thing just blew up. And then we, we were like, okay, we did the uh, four sequels. And then we were like, okay, the, kind of the franchise tip like that. And then we had this idea to do, do puppies talking animals at, at the buddies characters. And that blew up as well. So then we made nine of those. <laughs> so, so yeah, yeah. So puppies, uh, you know, it's a whole different, it's a whole different thing, right? Like it's a much more measured experience um, and with visual effects and everything else. But the thing about puppies, you never know what they're going to do. So you get organic moments by that. So it's just different, you know, something like Buddy, you knew he was so smart and so capable of anything. You knew what he, you kind of knew what he was going to do more or less with a puppy. You have no idea. And it's a lot more trainers on the set. It's a lot crazier, but golden retrievers are probably the most trainable dogs I've ever seen as puppies as well. Yeah, I, I believe it. And can you share any upcoming projects or anything else we can look forward to part of the Airbud world? Yeah, I think, I think the timing is really interesting. We've been waiting sort of for this timing, as you said, for you, your generation to grow up and be having kids themselves and being at that time. So we we have a, an animated uh, 3D animated series that we're, we're going to do kind of like a, a high end one. So it's, a, it, it's, I can't tell you too much about it, but otherwise I'd say it's basically everybody is a puppy and his, in, in his neighborhood with all his friends. So it's a so we're that that's kind of, that's we're working on right now and that's going to be out next year, and then um, sorry sorry I got to click this off, uh, and then uh, yeah so we're, we're and then we're also um, yeah also we're working on a movie we've been working on a movie for a while to which is uh, we we have called it Airbud Returns just because we don't want to divulge the title title right now but. It's really something special. It's something we've been working on for over five years, waiting for the right timing. And uh, the series will come out first. We want to introduce uh, littler kids actually to Airbud as well. So that's why the, the animation is coming out first. And then uh, and then we're going to go to, we have a movie that we're doing as well. So 
it's going to be an interesting uh, next, uh, I would say, three to five years because we really get a chance now to expand the franchise and the character of Airbud in, in a new way. So I would say like the movie is imagine reinventing, you know, uh, like Creed reinvented, you know, Rocky. So think of it that way. So we're going to, we, we have a, I think a really special movie coming out, but I can't tell you exactly when the movie is going to come out. Cause it's, it's still in, in the works, but um, the series is kind of next, what you'll see. And we hope to capture all the, the imaginations of the young kids. So we're not, we're not doing a, um, we're not doing an animated cartoon. We're doing a, basically a series like Air Buddies. I would say what it's most like is like Secret Life of Pets meets the Air Buddies franchise. It's kind of a way to look at it, you know? That sounds exciting. I'm looking forward to all that. And maybe we can get maybe Air Bud and Pickleball, Pickleball or Air Bud and Cornhole. <laughs> <laughs> Just throw my ideas out there. But thank you so much to talk to me about thank the you. world of Air Bud, Robert. This was amazing. And I'm looking forward to the movie and the series. I'm super excited to see Air Bud again. Yeah. And we're really excited for people to see it on Disney Plus. I think you know, it's a, all fourteen of the movies are there now. And so, if you're in a bit, if you if you're want to want to OD on Golden Retrievers, you know where to go. <laughs> I'll be doing that ASAP, actually, right now, right when I get off with you. So, thank you so much, Robert. Okay, take care. Once again, this is Sean Taj, the mayor of Nertropolis, and stay tuned for more movie news, reviews, interviews, and trailers.